Well, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? And welcome to my final reactions video of the week. Yes, I know we have been posting a lot these last three days, but we got some college football news to go over. We got reactions, predictions, dynasty, dynasty, and then, of course, Madden Franchise Rebuild left in this week's video log. But first, of course, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, turn that bell on. We do our best to post on this channel every single day. With that being said, today, first of many videos for you guys. A lot of these are going to be pre-recorded because I will be super, super busy tomorrow. I got work until about 5 o'clock. Um, lunchtime for me. Going to do something off of my lunch break. That's how busy I am. And uh, after I get off of work, I'm coming straight here, hitting the house, going to the hill for uh, Friday night's game for the Spanish War Toros as they take on Bay Minette. And I will be on the sidelines for that matchup. So with that being said, we got to get these videos out, get them ready for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead, hop right in to these SEC week number one reactions today. All right, so how we're going to do this is we're going to do Thursday and Friday together, Saturday and Sunday together as well. I'm just going to run down things really quickly, talk about what I didn't like and what I liked about these couple of games as well. By the way, New Jersey has been acquired. If you guys can't see, that is number eight for Cam Coleman. Got his jersey this weekend, this past weekend at the Auburn game, and I cannot be super excited for that era to start in Auburn. But with that being said, let's go ahead and react to these games. Starting off with Murray State at Missouri. Missouri just about took care of business. Brady Cook, 238 passing yards. Uh, leading receiver was, of course, Luther Burton with 40, 50 receiving yards. Didn't really need to do much for them to beat Murray State at home as Brady Cook and Luther Burton look like they're going to be a great duo this upcoming year. Arkansas Pine Bluff at Arkansas. Arkansas hanging up 70 on Arkansas Pine Bluff. Again, it is Arkansas Pine Bluff who, again, does not really, they're not really a real team. Taylor Green threw for 229 passing yards is what I'm looking at. Jaquindion Jackson, the Russian, the running back, 101 rushing yards on the day as well. So Arkansas and Missouri are both getting blowout wins to start the year off for the SEC. SEC right now is 2-0 going into Friday, where Friday you have Temple going to Oklahoma, and Oklahoma shuts him out 51-3. I will say, however, in this game, Jackson Darnold only passed for 141 passing yards. He did not look very good. He had one of the worst QBR ratings out of the SEC quarterbacks this weekend. With that being said, I think it's going to take time, and I think that uh, Oklahoma will, in fact, get better. However, expect them to have a struggling start in the SEC. But Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma all get wins, as expected to do this weekend in the SEC. All right, up next is, of course, the 11 a.m. kickoff game, Clemson at Georgia. I thought Georgia took them a little bit to get going. They did not look very good in that first half. Clemson was kind of keeping it close in that first half. I believe it was 6-3 to three going into halftime, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, Georgia just woke up in the second half and they found a way to win this game against Clemson. Clemson, obviously, their defense has collapsed. Carson Beck proved why he is a Heisman favorite with a 278 passing yard day. Noah Frazier led the team in rushing, of course, the third string running back because ETN and the other one got hurt or were suspended and this one as well. And then Antonio Williams was the leading receiver as well in the whole game at 76 receiving yards. Overall, very solid day for the Georgia Bulldogs in that second half. First half looked a little rough. Colorado State at Texas. Texas did take care of business here. 52 to nothing. Quinn and Ewers, 260 passing yards, got benched in the first half. Relatively understandable in my opinion as Arch Manning did come in the game as well. And uh, Texas did get the win, 52 to nothing. Western Kentucky at Alabama. This was one of the ones that I thought was going to be a very, very sneaky game, but I did have Alabama winning. However, it was not, and Kellen DeBoer starts his career at Alabama off on the right foot, getting a one nothing win. Now, Ryan Williams for Alabama is going to be a freaking dog. The kid at 17 years old, had 93 receptions for two touchdowns on the day. That is why he's committed to Alabama. That is why he reclassified, and that is why Alabama is going to be a force in the SEC this year as they get the job done against Western Kentucky. I know it's Western Kentucky, but again, you got to think, they keep putting up like they do against teams like Ole Miss and stuff like that. 
then they're going to be a very good team. Speaking of Ole Miss, that leads me into my next team right there. Ole Miss hosting Furman, putting up 76 on Furman. At one point, I thought that Ole Miss was going to put up 100 on Furman. I really did. I thought that they were going to put up 100. Turns out they did not, and uh, Ole Miss gets the win 76 to nothing. Carson Beck, or Jackson Dart, threw for 418 yards in the entire game. And, uh, yeah, they prove why they are number six in the country and get the win at 76-0. to 0. Notre Dame, Texas A&M, I'll give my thoughts on that one the last game, so stay tuned for that one as well. Chattanooga at Tennessee. The Nico era in Knoxville has arrived. What did I tell you? I'm not getting too high on them yet. With that being said, I'm not going anywhere with my stock on Tennessee. Tennessee brings in Nico Imaliava. Uh, I don't count the bowl game as a starting, so this was his first year as the starter as well. 314 passing yards on the day, and uh, Tennessee is going to be a force in the SEC as well. I think they go undefeated to go into Georgia, and uh, or go into Bama rather, and uh, you have one loss going into Georgia, where I think Tennessee could potentially make the college football playoff. But we will have to see on that one in due, due time as the Nico era in Knoxville has arrived and no one can be more excited than me. Right now, up next is Miami at Florida. Miami, man. Cam Ward, congratulations. This man, Cam Ward, proved why he is going to be a Heisman favorite in this game. Proof that Miami can beat just about anybody. They went into the swamp and Cam Ward looks so cool, so compressed, dead ass. I'm not saying that just to say that, but his heart rate was basically just just steady. Like it did not go up, it did not go down. It went right where it was. He was so calm and composed in the swamp to have a day like he did, man. That takes some balls. And uh, Cam Ward, Miami, you guys are going to be a scary force to reckon with here. Come in January when the college football playoff begins. Virginia Tech at Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt getting the walk-off win in overtime off of a touchdown. And this game was so much fun to watch. I, again, I picked Vanderbilt. A lot of you guys were doubting me when I picked Vanderbilt. Picked them to win this game. And, uh, yeah, they won this game. What did I say? I'm just that guy, you know what I'm saying? as they get the win against Virginia Tech to start their season off 1-0 on the year. Old Dominion, South Carolina. Wow, South Carolina, Shane Beamer, they almost lost this game. They have an important matchup against Kentucky coming up this weekend, which we will talk about here shortly in the next video. But, uh, yeah, South Carolina almost losing to Old Dominion did shock me a little bit. And, uh, yeah, they got some work to do if they want to compete in the SEC. They got Georgia in two weeks, man. They got to get their crap together if they're going to compete against Georgia in two weeks. And uh, up next, Eastern Kentucky at Mississippi State. Nothing really to talk about there as Mississippi State gets the job done like I expected. Alabama A&M at Auburn. The game I was at, the, the Cam Coleman era has arrived, if you guys cannot tell. Wearing that jersey right here, Cam Coleman had one touchdown, but it was Malcolm Simmons who led the way in receiving for the Auburn Tigers out of the freeze four. He caught a couple of touchdowns. Sam Jackson, the fifth, caught a touchdown. Cam Coleman got one. Perry Thompson got one. The only one out of the freeze four that did not get a touchdown was Bryce Kane. Expect him to pop off big against Cal this weekend as well. Peyton Thorne did what Peyton Thorne needs to do, and they got the job done against Alabama A&M. Southern Miss at Kentucky. Kentucky taking care of business. 31-0 against Southern Miss. Nothing really to highlight there. They got a good game against South Carolina coming up. And Brock Vandergriff has to get that Kentucky Wildcats team fired up if they want to beat South Carolina. Last matchup of the day in the SEC this weekend was USC LSU. Wow. USC holding LSU to 20 points is a great job for them as well. And, uh, yeah, USC looked really solid. I thought Miller Moss looked really good. Garrett Nussmeyer did look really good as well. Kyron Lacey looked pretty good. And I think LSU fans are kind of disappointed in that team based off of that performance this past weekend. I'm here to tell you, don't don't worry, LSU fans. You guys are still going to be good. Still have y'all going to the SEC championship game. And, uh, yeah, they fall to USC 
to start the year 0-1. Anyway, that is where I'm going to leave my reactions for today's video. Once again, if you have not already, like, subscribe, turn that bell on. College football is in full swing, man. SEC predictions coming up next. Baylor Bears Dynasty coming up next. UNC Dynasty coming up next. And then, of course, Madden Tennessee Titans franchise rebuild as well. Lots of content coming for you guys today. Again, like, subscribe, turn that bell on. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.